Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming. And yes, it has been a little while since the last video. If you saw the previous episode, you'll know that there was going to be a bit of a lapse between this episode and the previous one. But we are back on track. Things are looking up. We have at least three videos already recorded. So I'm hoping now to continue with a video once a week. And to recap, Project Monaco is a community series working alongside some of the best asset creators in the game. We are putting together the whole of Monaco. Yes, we're going to try and attempt the whole of it. And so far, we have got a lot done already. And I'm thinking there's going to be at least another four episodes to complete the whole of this harbour area. And this week, we're going to start on this top right hand corner of the harbour with only one side left to go and in fact this area is very similar to what we did in the last episode but we do have some extremely difficult um, slopes to add in here and you'll see a bit later in the video that it took me a while to work out the best way to do so but you can see here on the left hand side we've got these beautiful slopes running down from the top tier right down to the ground tier so that's going to be interesting. We've got a few shops as well here and some nice walls as well. So it's going to be a very interesting episode, I tell you that. So stick around and we'll certainly have a lot of fun building this. But before we jump into the build, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been asking about the project and checking to see where my whereabouts has been for the last month. I appreciate all those lovely comments. And as a repayment to everyone, I'm going to do my very best, like I said, to get a video out once a week and really push this series forward. So this episode is all about tiers and it's going to be a very interesting one to really get these two tiers to meet. When I say these two tiers, I'm about this tier here we're building and of course the ground tier itself. And this was always going to be a difficult part of Monaco and it still is. This is still early stages on actually being able to replicate this as best as we can but increasing the number of tiers and getting things to match up and line up and not only that but making it workable in terms of uh, the sims themselves as well and uh, getting them to be able to actually move along these areas because as you can see at the moment this isn't actually a floor so to speak for someone to walk across this is purely just plopple asphalt and without anything on top of those nothing's going to happen it's just going to be there for a presentation so i'm going to work on something later on probably episode nine is probably going to be the video where we um bring this whole area to life so that's what i'm very excited to start working on and one i'm very excited to show you guys but as you can see here we are working on some beautiful beautiful stairs and unfortunately they're not going to be available in the workshop just yet again i've taken these from some props made for a asset which we'll see a bit later on probably episode 11 or 12 perhaps um, but for the time being these are beautiful these steps are fantastic by Mac Welshman um, and these are just great for this area um, I wanted to create a very nice stylish looking um, steps to bring the two tiers together it's not exact as you would see in real life um, but it certainly does the job here and I really do like the way these have been designed and it just fits very nicely with these curved edit edges um, hitting up next to the swimming pool so very impressed with these assets and I'm sure a lot of you are going to really take advantage once these become available on the workshop. So this area actually has almost three tiers we've got the top tier which is the orange pavement we've got this next tier just above the stairs which is the sort of pavement area leading up to the swimming pool and then the third layer is where the car park will eventually be. So tears galore here in Monaco and it's going to be very interesting to see how we can achieve these to the maximum really. And one thing that I hadn't been able to use and take advantage of in these next couple of episodes is the new addition to move it. So there's a new addition now where you can line up your props and easily place them down so rather than having to use page up and page down when you're building them you can now do this with a click of a couple of buttons so that's one feature that I'm really going to take full advantage with but unfortunately this was done in the mundane pressing button fashion but uh, 
it's still very satisfying for me there's a lot of times where i actually prefer to hand play stuff um for example rather than using the uh prop line tool i do fancy now and again just doing it by hand just because i feel sometimes we need that sort of human edge to some of these builds now this next section <laughs> watching back on video now feels so painful with this new uh, move it addition um, to the mod and the reason i say that is because there were so many times where i was layering up and trying to get the right height of these roads whereas i could have just placed them down and took advantage of the new um, mod feature to level the terrains but you know it's going to be there for future builds so i'm not too bothered about it now it's just very painful to watch it back here um, on this time lapse but anyway, we're just working out the two tier levels here. So eventually this corner bends around and levels down um, to the bottom tier, but also then rises back up. So again, just trying to work on those. And as you'll see here, we're placing down some of these beautiful shops. And again, they're not quite going to be on the workshop yet. Um, we'll look at those in a lot more detail a bit later on in a few episodes time. And what I'm doing here is, in fact, we do change this quite a bit a bit later on, but I'm using Los Gecko's Monaco walls that he's so gladly done for me to fill in these gaps here. However, it did get rather painful and I did actually reach out to Los Gecko and ask him whether he can make some retaining walls, which you would have all seen already on the workshop. Um, and well, it made life so much more easier you can see here i get good level um a good level with these standard walls um but you just need that sort of human edge to it they wanted to have a bit more of a curve and a bit better level down um which obviously you can't do with straight monaco walls as you can see here but we'll come across that a bit later on and to be honest, thinking about it, this actual episode has almost two um, two versions. Um, the first version being what you're seeing now where we're using the standard Monaco walls. And we're not using um, any pavements to create the uh, the drops and the curves, which eventually we will, we will do. Um, you'll see here, I do manage to find a clever little way to make some steps using the proper asphalt, uh, but it didn't quite look how it did in Monaco. It was more of a, an idea I had, which I thought would look quite nice in this area. But Monaco is known for its smooth um, curves and these steps didn't quite do the job that I wanted. But you'll see here, we were able to achieve quite a nice look here um, using a very clever technique of just lowering the um, probable asphalt slightly on the way down to create some steps. And with that in mind, I'm gonna leave you with this time lapse just to show you how I created this tier level with the steps. And then we'll jump into the second method I used to create a more appealing slope method. Catch you in a bit. So welcome back guys and you can see that this area didn't look too bad at all but I then had a clever idea of using the uh, pavements with the Monaco obviously concrete theme on there to replicate a smoother slope rather than having to have steps we would use the pavement itself which one means that people will be walking along it which will add to the realism and two you get this beautiful 
beautiful slope which we can combine nicely with the plopper asphalt to really create this nice smooth level down and really adds to those beautiful curves and different tier levels that you see in Monaco. So you can see here I'm just combining both the um, standard pavement that we got here and some plopper asphalt and eventually you'll see as well we move over to the Monaco retaining walls which combined with this new slope work absolutely fantastically so I'm really really happy with how this combination worked and it's certainly one that I'll be using a lot more and I really do love the way that Monaco embeds their shops and their buildings inside the actual tiers themselves it means that you can really get some beautiful effects and me eight things look a lot more realistic like this little area here it's a wall but all we're doing is adding on these uh, doors and some pillars and it really makes it look like there is something underneath this tier rather than just a standard bog standard tier um, with nothing there this really does give that feeling that there is something underneath and it's not just a waste of space or a block of concrete which you know with Monaco having such a small area to work with in terms of um, buildings and living areas this is the sort of thing that really is needed in Monaco and it really does look good okay so we're now going to move on to the car parking area and you'll see here I've been using the beautiful technique of paging up and down these lines because in my opinion they are far too bright certainly for this area in Monaco so just tapping down when you put this highlighted with move it really do make this look really nice and sort of a worn and weared out sort of area um, of car parking which is what you expect to see where an area is being used quite regularly so I really do like this idea um, and it just brings things to life a little bit better than having these bright white lines and I must say you should all try and experiment with different decals and lowering and hiring the uh, decals to get different effects there's a lot that I have used over Monaco which you'll see in later episodes but just give it a try even some of the decals that you probably wouldn't normally use if matched up rightly with the correct um, well the correct tone in terms of uh, proper asphalt or whatever you're placing it down onto you can get some really nice achievements with those and there's one I'll show you in a couple of episodes of time which is uh, a decal that I thought I'd never ever use but combined with the pavement really did look beautiful but we'll leave that for another episode. So as you can see here we're trying to replicate as best we can the car parking layout. It's not going to be precise because this corner is a little bit difficult to do um, with the keys that I've got added but we're trying to replicate the uh, sideway parking along here using these beautiful parking assets which do work well they're not obviously going to be real workable um, parking but I didn't really want that I don't think this area is going to be too busy in terms of having a lot of cars coming along and parking but we will bring this area to life and for now we'll just put down some uh, prop cars later on um, which I know might not add to the realism but there will be cars floating across here so I think it'll work well and again you'll see here using the page up page down um, part, oh, <laughs> methods to create a better looking area and I really do love adding these decals down on the pavement pavements do look a little bit too over the top when you add a lot of these uh, beautiful decals and just tapping them so they're just there As you can see here this top area I love it the effects you can get and that's pretty much just one or two tabs above invisible and that's all you need just to bring the roads to life the textures of roads themselves are fantastic don't get me wrong but just adding a little bit really does add to it and it was this point that Los Gecko kindly created the Monaco retaining walls you can see here in the background so the next job is pretty much to replace everything <laughs> with these retaining walls just to increase the realism so that's what we're going to be doing here and I'm going to leave you with a little time lapse. Remember to check out Los Gecko's work on the workshop, you'll find these Monaco retaining walls on there very shortly. But we'll jump into a quick time lapse, I'll leave you to it whilst I mess around with these beautiful and fun working retaining walls.
So there we have it, we have the retaining walls pretty much down now. Um, you'll also see that I created some little steps as well and I really love the um, well the realism this gives by just using these curbs. Um, dropping down the actual um, probable asphalt on top of each other very close, you can create these really nice looking steps and adding in the uh, curbs themselves just add to that realism and make it look like it is a step rather than just the these little gaps in between so we've also added down a lot of mopeds there's a lot of car parking areas as well as moped areas so that was pretty cool and it does bring things to life a lot more here um, and just finishing off this car park I wanted to fill this gap in as well here so just bringing the car park all the way over making things look a lot more like you see it in real life Monaco and what I love about this episode is I've learned a hell of a lot um, as I say, not forgetting that there is this new addition to move it, which is gonna make life so much more easier when I'm building now. Um, but even before that, just working on ways to make the realism that much better um, during this episode. I know it's not as clean episode as before. There's a lot of chopping and changing, but that's all for the better. And that's also thanks to the quick uh, return rate from Los Gecko, who very quickly put together those Monaco retaining walls which allowed me to get this episode out and completed as I wanted, which is brilliant. So thank you very much for that, Lost Gecko. Always very appreciated of your work efforts on City Skylines. And going back to the steps, you can see just there, we use the method of just dropping down the plop of asphalt, just one tab down each time, which do create these really nice steps. And just edging some of these curbs around certain areas does bring it to life and it makes the area pop a little bit better. Um, sometimes the painted white lines don't quite look right in my opinion and you do need to add a little bit of um, construction and that's what I've done here and we also just added in some of these shops as well which again I'll say you'll see a bit more of in a later episode not for now um, they won't be on the workshop until that point so we'll cover that a bit later on and also I am hiding the fact of what they actually are with these um, overhangers which um, is meant to be done <laughs> for this episode I'm not hiding it on purpose uh, for any other reason um, so that's uh, another interesting point and here again I had a bit of a, a bit of an awkward area here a little bit of a gap um, which I needed to create some sort of a step down so I used that method again of dropping the, uh, the tab button down one at a time to create these steps themselves and then we cover up with the curbs um, and I do like this idea it does work extremely well um, I could have used the um, pavement again, but unfortunately when you put the pavement down in this corner, the way pavement works is it brings a big um, overfill over into the other side. So it brought up the land basically, it messed up the terrain, uh, which didn't work too well. And the final part of this episode is adding on this line of trees. We've already done it before on the previous episode and this just adds to this area. These are almost identical trees as well to what you see in real life and just adding this line of tree really does make this area look so much more complete. Um, and I can't wait to add the apartments as well behind this. Once you get those tiers all together being the sea itself, the main dock, the next tier up, the trees, and then the apartments, and then obviously the skyline. It's gonna look absolutely fantastic. I really cannot wait for that. But that does bring us very close now to the end of the episode. Um, really happy with how this has come about, this episode. Again, apologies for the delay in the previous episodes, but we're gonna be hitting Monaco hard. I've got a bit more time on my hands now. Um, things are a bit sorted now this end so we should be able to knock out some videos and keep going strong um, I've got a lot and I mean a lot of custom assets that I can't wait to show you off to you guys but we need to complete this area first and I can't wait to show you this area there's a very nice uh, episode coming up next week um, which I'm really excited to show off one of these assets to show off are absolutely incredible but let's have a quick look at what we've done today. 
So starting off, we can see the tiers themselves. And again, like I say, look at those trees. Those trees look fantastic. And this staircase, I am so, so pleased with it. It looks absolutely sensational. It just adds to this area. The curve on that side really, really looks nice. And I'm so pleased with that. And I can't wait to um, show you the real reason why these were made. It's gonna look even better when we show that off and get onto the workshop. But for now, you'll have to deal with it, I'm afraid. I also added these lights as well, which look really nice at night time. Um, onto the pillars, I added these as well to add to the realism. Really do like that. And the car park itself did come out extremely well. Love the texture levels and just placed a few vehicles around. They want to fill the whole thing up. Um, but yeah, it did look really nice. And as you can see now, moving across, we're slowly coming over to the slopey tiers along the side. I also added these planters around the rest of this area. I don't know if they are there normally, but it made sense to carry it on. And look at this. That is one super smooth curb. Curb? Um, pathway, I guess. But um, yeah, really pleased how I was able to match that all across with the um, proper little asphalt itself. It does look so much better than the step down, which we created previously. And these shops in the corner, inside the building, sorry, inside the walls themselves look fantastic. The whole area has really, really come alive just by adding and tweaking a few things here and there. Los Gecko's walls, you can see there in the background, absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really pleased with this. Bringing this to the end of the episode now then, guys. So I'm going to leave you be for now. Make sure you stick around for the cinematics because they are sensational really really happy of how this came about and we're going to be moving on next episode to completing the latter stage of the harbour itself so to give you a summary we've got two more episodes coming up where we're going to be building a lot on this area which will complete the main construction of um, the harbour area and then the next episode after, we will get to then bring this area to life and then move on to something very special, which I am so excited to bring you. And it's one of the areas that I really thought would be very challenging to do, and it probably still is, um, but I have managed to work with a creator, um, which I'm hoping will mean it's done a lot better. So that's it, guys. We'll leave things there for today. Make sure you follow me on social media. Check out the Discord for some beautiful teasers. And next week, we will be working on this area here. So guys, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. Make sure you don't miss next week's episode. And I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching and all the best.